Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-914-9149. Here's Terry and Jesse. Prepare for spiritual weapons and tactics training. Yep, this is SWAT training. Two guys with a PhD in common sense. Pull up a chair, pour yourself something to drink. This is a family show. Let's keep it clean here. Today's gospel is soul food. You know, this morning Patrick was over here at the Lord's Gym doing his program here from the Lord's Gym. And we had some menudo. And Patrick my, and Madrid and myself, we agreed that menudo is good. But you know what's better than menudo? The gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. What did Jesus have to tell us today? <laughs> Luke chapter 11, verse 1 and 4. It says, Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he had finished One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test, the gospel of the Lord. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Just a comment on this prayer. The Our Father is found in two Gospels. It's found in Matthew chapter 6, and it's found in today's Gospel at Holy Mass, Luke chapter 11, verse 1 and 4. The Our Father that Catholics, that we as Catholics generally say, we say the longer form, which is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. That's the one we usually say. Also, St. Thomas Aquinas says that of all the prayers in Christianity, all the prayers out there, the most prominent, uh, the most perfect prayer out there is the Our Father because it was given to us directly by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Here's my action item. Pray the Our Father every morning at least and every evening before you go to bed at least, if not a couple times during the day. Terry? My comment is Scott Hahn taught me a beautiful explanation. He called it Biblical Theology of the Lord's Prayer. He did three hours on the Lord's Prayer. What? Yes. And I'll give it away. I'll give the first CD away because I want you to understand this is the most beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. And you can get that by calling 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.org. The Our Father, remember, prayed in the morning, prayed at the end of the day when you do your examination of conscience. It is the perfect prayer. Yep. Also, uh, somebody asked the question, Terry Jesse, how many petitions does the Our Father uh, does the Our Father prayer have? That's Mm. a good question, and that's a long answer. So what I did, I responded, I blogged the following: If you want to know, first of all, the, the Our Father has seven petitions. I can tell you that it has seven petitions. Each petition is explained individually in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Paragraph 2857 to 2865. So for those of you that want the full theology, what each verse means in the Our Father, the Catechism gives you a full explanation from paragraphs 2857 to 2865. And I posted that on the blog today. Terry? Yeah, Jess, I want to also talk about Fulton Sheen. We call him the Venerable Fulton J. Sheen. And we want to... Bring him into our show each day. We hear us say full sheen ahead. Well, uh, Bishop Sheen has some interesting comments about gifts, the gift of the gifts. And um, I would like Jesse to read that because this is so powerful that he's giving us here. He's been dead 40 years and he's still feeding you and me. Yep. He talks about the gift and the gifts. He says this. Now there are gifts. They are called gifts charisms. There are many of them. St. Paul mentions about 15 charisms. What is the difference between the gift and the charisms? Okay, this is good here. He says, in theology, we make a distinction between gratia gratum faciens and gratia gratis data. 
Gratia gratum faciens is that which makes us pleasing to God. That is the gift. That is grace. It makes us pleasing to God. Gratia gratis data is the charism. For example, preaching is one charism. Would you believe that administration is another charism? So what's the difference between the gift and the charism? The gift makes us pleasing to God. And the charism makes us helpful in relationship to others. To others, that's the point. For example, Venerable Sheen says, I have the charism of preaching. People think I'm holy. I talk about holy things. So they say he must be a holy priest. Not necessarily. There are some people who worked miracles in the Old Testament that were not too holy. That's another one of the charisms. Venerable Sheen says, If there's any holiness in me, it's not because I exercise that particular charism of teaching. As a matter of fact, he says, I know a hundred actors who could do better than I'm doing. If there is to be any holiness, it has to be before I come into the pulpit and after I leave it. There I am just exercising a gift that God gave and He could take it away. That's a powerful reflection because what Venerable Sheen says here today is basically what Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. Some people are telling our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they're saying, Lord, but but didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we, we do mighty works in your name? What's that a description of? As Fulton Sheen says, that's charismatic gifts. When God gives you the gift, to bless other people in the body of Christ. But Jesus says in Matthew 7, He says, But I will declare to them, Depart from me, I never knew you. That's what Archbishop Venerable Sheen is saying. He says, A gift is grace. It's sanctifying grace. It makes you holy. You get that from the sacraments. Charismatic gifts may be given to you. Everybody has a charismatic gift. And that's given to you to make other people's holy. You can have all 15 charismatic gifts, and guess what? According to Jesus, Matthew 7, you can be on your way to hell. Because charismatic gifts don't make you holy, it makes other people holy. Sanctifying grace, known as the gift of grace, that's what makes you holy and gets you to heaven. Terry? It's the life of God in us, grace. And I want to mention, because I love Bishop Sheen, I went to his funeral almost 40 years ago. I have a life is worth living 50 half-hour shows that uh, you want to actually hear Bishop Sheen preach on these topics, you can get that. It's $19.95 for like 24 hours of Fulton Sheen. You can get that on an MP3 disc, plus you get a video by calling 877-526-2151. I want you to have the best of Fulton Sheen. It's called Life is Worth Living because here at the Terry and Jesse Show, we love Bishop Sheen. We love Scott Hunt. We love to be formed in the faith. And today, Bishop Sheen is doing just that now. And matter of fact, on Relevant Radio, when we have this new lineup coming up, he's still on the radio here. Because as a as a part of the merger, Relevant Radio beginning Monday this week, next week Monday, the network will now be heard coast to coast with more live programming. And I'm happy to say the Terry and Jesse show is now going to be at 5 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. You can always get it through the Relevant Radio iPhone app. If you can't listen to us while you're driving home from work or you're busy then. Also, this Friday, be sure to tune in to the Drew Mariani Show, 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time. Irrelevant Radio Executive Director Father Rocky and our own Patrick Madrid will join Drew in sharing this exciting new lineup. You won't want to miss it. At 2 o'clock Pacific Coast time, Friday, you're going to get the whole schedule. But I can at least tell you, Terry and Jesse, we're going to be on at 5 in the afternoon. Can you imagine people on the East Coast are going to be hearing the, the Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Latin lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ <laughs> proclaiming the teachings of Christ. Praise God. <laughs> let, let me uh, pull up a chair, pour yourself something to drink. This is good stuff here. Did you know that the Our Father... Uh, which was today proclaimed in Luke's Gospel at Holy Mass, it's also an exorcism prayer. You're saying, what? I pray an exorcism prayer? Absolutely. If you pray this prayer, absolutely it's an exorcism prayer. Notice the last words it says, but deliver us. See, that's known as the ministry of exorcism, being delivered from demons. It says, 
but deliver us. I know we say at Holy Mass or in our private, we say, but deliver us from evil. If you go to the Catechism, paragraph 2851, the Catechism says, evil is not an abstraction, but evil refers to a person, Satan, the evil one. So in other words, the, the, when we say the Our Father, what we're really saying is this, deliver us from the evil one. In fact, many Greek manuscripts, there's about 4,000 uh, Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. Many of the Greek manuscripts that are used to translate uh, the word of God into the different languages, it actually uses the word the evil one. Some manuscripts use the word evil, but nonetheless, the catechism says it, this refers directly to Satan. Deliver us from the evil one. So this is an exorcism prayer that you're praying every day, given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. When we come back from the break, you know what we're going to talk about? What Pope Francis has to say about eliminating any differences between the sexes. It's not right. Listen to what the Holy Father has to say. He's making sense. You're here listening to the Terry and Jesse show. You can, you're welcome to pick up Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living by calling the 877-526-2151. You're not going to want to miss what Pope Francis has to say next. We'll be back in a moment. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. to the Terry and Jesse show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-914-9149. Here's Terry and Jesse. The Latin lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Latin lover of our lady, my partner. Terry Barber, the Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, did you hear about the Holy Father? He made some very powerful statements. Uh, he sure did. That uh, were directed to this whole transgender confusion. He he said, Pope Francis says that eliminating any difference between sexes is not right. I love that moral clarity. Okay, no sugar coating, no gray area. He also says using science to eliminate to radically eliminate any difference between the sexes, and as a result. The covenant between man and woman is not right. The Pope also says the biological and psychological manipulation. Wow. Power. Oh, I love those words. Preach it, Pope Francis. He says the biological and psychological manipulation. That's it, what of, it is. Of sexual difference, which biomedical technology now presents as a simple matter of choice, which it is not. It risks eliminating the source of energy that nourishes the covenant between man and woman and makes it creative and fruitful. Yeah, Pope Francis is basically talking about our culture right now. We, he's describing our culture as an egocentric culture. I want to feel good. I want it now. I want to feel good. In other words, the Pope is saying that what we're doing right now with all this junk science, it's, we're becoming obs obsessive. With, with with making man the center of everything, with making man the the you know just basically the individual, uh, that's the only thing that matters. Uh, a world that's man centered and not and not God centered, and that's dangerous. Terry, very dangerous. You know what the Pope is saying? That God got it right when He made man and He made woman. Really, thank you, Holy Father, because we live in a world right now. That can't tell, like the Bible said yesterday in the readings, our right hand from our left hand. Yeah, we don't know. And thank you for that clarity, because you know what? I think the church, and this is what Father uh, Bishop Robert Barron said, that a church that's not precise is a corrupt, corrupt church. And the Holy Father, thank you right now saying such clarity here, because we need that clarity right now, because we're confused as a culture. You know the effects of this confusion? Suicide. People are not even so they're so confused. They have no understanding of the meaning and purpose of life. They think their life has only meaning when it feels good. And for Holy Father Pope Francis is saying, no, you do it God's way. You're going to be happy before I turn it back to Jesse. I'm going to sing my song. I know. Don't turn the radio off. 
We got, there's a song they sing in heaven. I did it his way. And there's a song they sing in hell. I did it my way. Everything in life comes back down to doing the will of God. What is the will of God in my life? That's the question I'm asking you and me. You know, societies, obviously, you know, we've got to try to find a way to overcome the subjugation of women. You know, uh, you got misogyny in Sharia law countries yep. under Islamic it's rule. Fact. You got misogyny over in Hollywood. We won't talk about it today, but uh, it's true. You know, uh, a big Hollywood producer has been exposed as one of the biggest uh, women abusers uh, in the in, in the country in the last couple of decades. So, you know, we can't pretend that there's not differences between men and women. There's differences. But the fact is, using technology to change a person's sex, that's not the answer. That's You know what the answer is? It's treating women like your sisters in Christ. You know what the answer is? Looking at women and giving them dignity and remembering that they're children of God. Not treating them like yeah. they treat them in, not treating them like they treat them in Hollywood. You know, Mr. Harvey Weinstein, not treating women like they treat them under Sharia law and not treating women, not manipulating them through science, through junk science and, and trying to alter their body parts and making them men. That's an abuse of women. That's not the answer. The answer is what Jesus Christ told us. He said this, love one another as I have loved you. The answer is to look at women as our sisters in Christ as women that we are called to protect, and we are called to be men. We're called to be chivalrous. Chivalry means to defend and protect women and children. Terry? Yeah, Pope Francis said this to the Pontifical Academy for Life for their commitment to defending the responsible uh, accompaniment of human life from conception throughout its years to natural end. See, no euthanasia. And engaging in dialogue with people, scholars, and different views to bring more authentic wisdom about life to the attention of all people. As a matter of fact, if you disagree with me, I want to have a dialogue with you. It's easy. You call toll-free, 888-914-9149. And we want to dialogue with you, especially if you think we're all wet. Because what the Holy Father is asking us is to open and be Fruitful dialogue can and must be established with many who are seeking the true meaning of life. The people who are all mixed up, they're seeking Christ, but they just don't know it. We at here at Irrelevant and Immaculate Heart Radio are helping them realize the true meaning and purpose of life is to do God's will in your life so that you could get to heaven. That's why we're talking about this, not because we want to tear down anybody. We're not tearing down anybody. We're saying, what is the truth about our human sexuality? God made man and he made woman with an express desire for the two to become one so that it would be fruitful, so that we can serve God and be happy in heaven for life, for, for everlasting life. That's it. And God said after he made man and woman, he said, it is very good. Amen. So for somebody to start manipulating somebody, somebody's body through junk science, you're basically saying, Lord, I can do it better than you can. Yep. Even even the medical community agrees with what the Pope is saying about this junk science. There's an article, it's called Leading Genital Reconstructive Surgeon. He says, number of patients who regret sex change is rising. Did you catch that? That's right. Is this microphone yep. on? Let me check, let me check. Okay, it's on. Yep. It says, number of patients who regret sex change is rising. So this leading surgeon, and in fact, he's a surgeon of... Uh, Recon, he's a reconstructive surgeon. He said that the number of patients that are regretting sex change operations, it's it's astronomically going through the roof. He's uh, His name is Miroslav, Dr. Miroslav. He operates at a clinic in Belgrade, Serbia. And he says that the increase especially is rising in men who had surgery to look like women. He says, Dr. Miroslav says... These men are having crippling levels of depression, suicidal thoughts, and they want to come back for a reversal. He says this is huge with men. The doctor, good doctor says, it can be a real disaster to hear these stories. Dr. Miroslav says that he performs about a, about 100 surgeries a year in mm -hmm. his Belgrade office. 
and in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And he says this, Definitely, reversal surgery and regret in transgender persons is one of the very hot topics. He said, Generally, we have to support all research in this field. But he's saying that, that, that all the reversal surgeries that he's performed have been on men over 30 years old who wish to who restore their male genitalia. They have regrets, and they're coming back by the truckloads. Terry? Well, what's really unbelievable, Jesse, that's all facts. But think about this. The Bath Spa University in the U.K., they made a decision last week to block the researchers from studying cases about sex change surgery regrets. The university decided that the research... You know what the reason was? It's politically incorrect and could expose the university to criticism. You see, the truth is what sets us free. And you won't hear this on the New York Times. You won't hear it in the L.A. Times. But you'll hear this on the Terry and Jesse show. And we're going to expose this for what it is because, you know what? People deserve the truth. And, again, I just go right back to all these studies. It says one thing. God had it right when he made man and he made woman. There are no mistakes. And so I just want to encourage you to go to our show page, get these articles, and share, share them with your friends because I think nobody else is going to say this uh, to you about the reversals and that, they, that they're reversing it. And, again, that the university is not going to talk about this because it's politically incorrect. It has nothing to do with the truth. It's we don't want to expose the university to criticism. Well, you go ahead and criticize the Terry and Jesse show because we're telling you the truth. I'm okay with that. All this has been predicted by by the Bible that these things would happen. Okay. Yep. This is, there, there's demonic underpinnings to all this. Okay. Straight demonic underpinnings. In fact, the top exorcist from Mexico, from the from uh, Father uh, Father Mendoza Pentoja, he says confusion in a society has the hands of the diabolical. Confusion in a society has the fingerprints of the diabolical. And St. Paul warned us that we would reach such a period where people would lose their moral compass. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, St. Paul writes, Now the Spirit expresses that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Ah, did you get that? Some will depart from the faith and give heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Did you hear that? Some people will leave the Catholic (laughs) faith, and what are they going to do? They're going to give themselves into doctrines of the devil, doctrines of demons, deceitful spirits. There's a false spirit of deception in this whole transgender movement. This is a spiritual battle. It's not a scientific. It's not a medical. It's a spiritual battle. And the remedy is Jesus Christ and his holy gospel. Do it Jesus' way. Jesus Christ says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well said. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Pope, the bishops, and Muhammad, and migration, a reflection by William Kirkpatrick. Very interesting article. You won't want to miss it. If you want to get the Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living MP3 for just hardly any money, call us at 877-526-2151. And when we come back, you're going to hear more about the Pope. We'll be back in a moment. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-914-9149. Here's Terry and Jesse. Two guys with a PhD in common sense. Hey, have you uh have you thought about uh immigration from from what I would say a a, a Thomistic point of view? What, what is do Thomistic? I mean by Remember? that? Yeah, St. St. No. Thomas Aquinas Thomas was a third Aquinas. a third a 13th century Catholic priest, a Dominican, who's a saint and a doctor of the church. In fact, he's probably the preeminent doctor when it comes to theology. And I've got an article here written by William Kirkpatrick, and I know what he did. He tapped into St. Thomas Aquinas on his section on immigration because it's all the reflections from St. Thomas. The article is called The Pope, the Bishops, Muhammad, and Migration. Here's what he's pointing to. Obviously, uh, as Catholics, 
We welcome refugees and immigrants. In fact, we're a country made of, of immigrants. But at the same time, the article points out that we have to also be uh, judicious. St. Thomas says we have to regulate people coming in, know who they are, vet them properly, and make sure that they want to assimilate. It, it would be, let me give you just a, a, a practical level. If somebody knocks at your door, do you allow anybody knocking at your door just come right in? Or do you say, hi, how can I help you? What's your name? Uh, what, you know, what, what, what's what, your what can here? I, what, what's your, yeah. You just don't, somebody knocks at your door. Yeah, come on in. Here, here there's a refrigerator. There's my bed. Hey, there's a television. <laughs> Nobody does that. And that's what this article's saying, saying, hey, Catholics, we may want to take a look and slow this down because this one paragraph of the article really nails it. Because, uh, again, Islam is a, is a religion that has expanded through conquest. Now, we're, not, we're talking about the, the religion of Islam. We're not talking about the people. I get it. There's good Muslims. Nope. Of course there's That's good right. Muslims. I'm yep. talking about the religion. If you didn't know, in 622 AD, Muhammad, the founder of Islam, who said that God spoke to him through an angel, him and his followers, they migrated to Medina. That's in Saudi Arabia. And what did he do? He quickly uh, started war against the people in Medina, and he took over that city. And then he used Medina as a launching pad to enact other wars, and eventually he conquered all of Arabia. So within a century of Muhammad's death, his followers, in a hundred years, get this, they conquered half the known world. Wow. And, and so in our time, right now that we're living in, uh, the bad Muslims, the terrorists, those are the bad Muslims, obviously, the jihadists, they want to conquer the whole world. They take the Quran literally. They want to conquer the entire world. They know they can't do it because the West is too strong. So Islam has always had a technique. It's called jihad through migration, which means we'll just be quiet. We'll just go into a country peacefully, quietly. We'll take it over. Then we're going to become the dominant population. Then we'll set up a base there for a caliphate, and we'll take over that country. That's called jihad through migration. I've been told this by Muslims to my face. They've told me that's how we're going to take over Europe, Jesse, and you guys can't stop it because we're having more kids than you guys, period. And so right now what I see in our time that Muslims have, have undertaken uh, Europe as, as that test case. They know they can't fight with European countries in war, okay? So what they're doing, they're setting up their base in, in Europe through migration, and this conceivably could allow them to conquer the rest of the Western world for Islam and Muhammad by taking over Europe. Terry, what do you think? Well, you know, the article also pointed out, and I agree, Pope Francis and others in the hierarchy tell us that the face of a refugee is the face of Christ. And I agree totally. Of course that's true. In a sense, that is true because... They are people, and they're made by God, right? But that metaphorically speaking, we may also be justified at times at seeing the face of Muhammad in the face of Muslim refugees, just like I see a face of someone coming to my front door. It might be a thug. It might be a friend. I have to use prudence. However, decent individual Muslims migrates may be they carry with them the seeds of the faithful Muhammad founder. In order to keep the faith alive, Muslim leaders encouraged the faithful not to assimilate. That's a fact. President Oregon of Turkey has called the assimilation a crime against humanity. What? What he has particularly in mind is the large and growing immigrant Turkish population in Germany, which he sees as the vanguard of the eventual Islamization of that country. Now, last thing, and I'll throw it right back. Typically, Muslim immigrants and refugees do not assimilate into the host culture. They form a parallel societies where the customs and laws of Islam set the tone. For example, I'll just give you an example. In Detroit, Michigan, there are areas near Dearborn where Sharia law is actually being used. Now, this is just the facts. That means that in these ghettos, there's little, if any, freedom of religion, equality of the sexes, or freedom of expressions. On the other hand, there's a great deal of anti-Semitic and anti-Christian sediments. That's right here in our country in little pockets. So I don't want to overalarm you. I'm just saying I think Mr. Kirkpatrick's article is really just showing us 
the facts, and sometimes uh, the facts make me uncomfortable. And if it make you making you uncomfortable, it's because this, that as a result of recent Muslim migration into Europe, there has been an enormous spike in crime. That's just the fact. Take one small example and consider Denmark, a country that one does not usually associate with crime or violence. As the spokesman of the Denmark's majority government party recently said, we have not had such warnings from the police since the Second World War. So these are the facts, and they're uncomfortable to talk about. But again, I might ha- I have a neighbor who's a, a Muslim, and he's probably nicer, and, and he, he, he's a nice, very nice man. And uh, there are people like that. I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. I'm just saying the religion has shown and demonstrated through history that it's a violent religion. I say, if you don't agree with me, tell me by calling me because it's the number's toll free, 888-914-9149. Here's what I have found in talking to Muslims, and I've talked to many yeah, Muslims. Many of them. Uh, and, and, they, and, and I've asked some Muslims, how do you reconcile the fact, I mean, you know, you live in my neighborhood and stuff, and the Quran tells you that you have to wage jihad, you've got to kill the infidel, uh, you've got to persecute the infidel. How do you reconcile that living in America in a nice neighborhood like this and what the Quran says? You know what they tell me, the good Muslims? They say, I don't pay attention to those verses in the Quran. I, they go, Jesse, I know they're there. I know there's uh, hundreds of verses that call for violence against non-Muslims and that call us to stone homosexuals and call us to, uh, to also kill apostates. I don't pay attention to those verses. So my Muslim friends that I've talked to that are good, decent people, they've told me quite clearly there are things in the Quran that they can't reconcile with decency. So we go, we just choose not to listen to that part of the Quran. Whereas, if you, if you ever hear a terrorist, you can go on YouTube, and all these terrorists are, are happy to brag about uh, what they do. The terrorists, they quote, or they justify their violence, and they'll give you a verse from the Quran, or many verses, justifying what they do and why they do it. Again, they're literalists. They take the Quran literally, and they're, and they're supported in their violence by verses in the Quran. I thank God that there's many Muslims that are good people that just don't pay attention to those 164 violent verses found in the Quran. Well, I'm going to say I'm, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm grateful for dissenters in the, Isl- in, in, in the Muslim church. Yeah, I'm grateful that they're dissenting from its teachings. We can't do that in Christianity. We have to hold down to the forces of what Christ taught. So I, I thought that was kind of funny. But, you know, I have an aunt living in Arizona. And she lived with a beautiful woman uh, for 20 years next door neighbor. She was a Muslim, and she was moving back to Florida. And so my aunt said to her friend of 20 years, you know, I just have to ask you, before you go, you've been such a great friend. I never really brought up religion much to you, but I read that your religion said that if you're not, if I'm not one of you, like a Muslim, your 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 book says that, uh, you know, you would, if, if Sharia law was called into effect, that you would kill a non-muslim and i've been your friend for 20 years would you really implement your muslim faith and kill me if that was the case and this lady looked straight at my aunt she's an old woman and she said absolutely that's what our religion teaches i have to follow the quran that's what i would do and my aunt looks at her and says she was stunned she would have never thought that she's i can't believe that but like i said she wasn't a dissenter we need more dissenters let's not do that and uh, that would be good but not all of them are dissenters. I was told the same thing by a Muslim taxi, a taxi cab driver. He saw me wearing the St. Benedict's medal around my neck. And, uh, and he says, uh, well, he said some vile things about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I can't share on this radio network. No, we're a family and, network. Yeah, we're a family network. And so I told him, I said, I said, man, I said, here I'm paying you to take me to the airport and you're insulting my Jesus. And he says, in fact, he says... You know what I you know what I should do to you? He says, because uh, I understand that you're a Christian evangelist, a Catholic evangelist. He says, if I kill you, I would go straight to paradise. I said, why <coughs> would you kill? I said, why would you kill me? You don't even know me. You're a taxi cab driver, and I'm paying you to take me to the airport. He says, because the Quran tells me to kill you. He, and he was that matter of fact. He wasn't, he didn't bat an eye. Again, he was a purist. He was a doctrinal purist. He took the Quran, all the all the 114 chapters, literally. He wasn't. I, again, it, you said something funny, and I agree with you, Terry. 
I know yeah. liberalism is a problem in 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 in, in politics and in our and, and in our Catholic faith. That's dissenters. That's what I mean by liberalism. Yeah. I'm glad there's Muslim liberals. I'm oh, glad absolutely. there's Muslim dissenters. I'm glad that there's Muslims that say, you know what? Those violent verses in the Quran, stoning homosexuals, uh, beating up your wife. Nope, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm I'm not down with that. Uh, and I'm just glad that this, that they follow the natural law that God put in their heart. Yep. Hey, man, we, when we come back, we're going to talk about was the Las Vegas shooter demonically influenced? Wow, that's a big question. We'll be back more in a moment. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. Views expressed on the Terry and Jesse show are for educational purposes only. Now here's Terry and Jesse. Spiritual weapons and tactics. Hey, you got your rosary? That's one of your SWAT gear. That's essential if you're going to be listening to this program. Here's a question I want to ask you. A lot of people are speculating about why the Vegas shooter did what he did. But is it possible? I'm just putting this out as a question. Then I think I'll build a case. Is it possible that the Vegas shooter was demonically influenced? Okay? I'll tell you why. One of the things about the Vegas shooter that we know is that everybody would uh, everybody saying, well, he was psychologically or you know, you know mentally mental illness. I, I get that, I get that, but that still doesn't explain why he did what he did. Okay, what he did was irrational. Okay, guess what? The devil is behind is behind things that are irrational, things that are evil, things that are chaotic. Okay. God is, rationality comes from God, reason comes from God, and irrationality and confusion comes from the devil. I, I, I'm thinking about the son of Sam, a, a serial killer from New York, David Berkowitz, who's now, by the way, fully converted to Christianity. He admits, he's given several interviews in jail, he says that he was obsessed and possessed due to an involvement with Satanists. Also, we have the Columbine killers. Uh... They also were involved in Satanism. The mm. the killer in Aurora, Colorado, uh, the poor lad in Danbury, Connecticut. All these killers have uh, had some type of contact with the occult, with uh, the world of darkness, heavy metal music, drugs, violent video games. Uh, you know, you got John Lennon's killer, Mark David Chapman. He said that he was hearing voices directing him who to kill, and, and so. Now we go back. I'm not going to mention the killer's name, but you know who he's the guy in Vegas, okay? He, uh, in, in some of those cases, we've heard from the girlfriend that he would be lying in bed, the shooter. He'd be lying in bed, and he'd be moaning. He'd be moaning in bed and screaming in bed, saying, Oh, my God! Oh, my God! And uh, we know that nightmares, for example... And we also know that demonic activity rises in the evening, according to every exorcist. And we know that nightmares can be demonically induced. And so people that scream in bed and are filled with terror, these are people that are often demonized. And so this is something that was happening to the shooter. The fact that he was a secular humanist, from what we know, okay, he was had no faith. That emptiness in your heart, it's a vacuum for demons. Yep. Because if you don't have God filling your heart, trust me, demons are going to try to fill your heart with their influence. Terry? You know, Jesse, that's how it works. And I, I this article, if you go to our show page, you want to read it. You know, it brings me back that on January 13th of, the, of next year, we're going to have a spiritual warfare conference called Angels and Demons. If you want to understand how it all works, as a matter of fact, I have a three CD set on the angels by Father William Wagner. He's our keynote speaker he's a he teaches the exorcist about these things the spiritual warfare things if you want to get that call 877-526-215 and understand the demonic but what's interesting about this article that just still blows me away you know the guy was into prostitution i get it if he doesn't believe in god whatever feels good he does it and the vacuum that was formed by not having god in your life 
yeah, it, it makes sense. I could see this happening. But what I found that was just uh, kind of blew me away that his girlfriend, okay, she was going to a Catholic mass, right, uh, several times a week. And um, I don't know uh, her story, but whether she knew what she was doing or maybe she was praying for the guy, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of confusion and what I call low information Catholics that maybe she was confused on how she could help this guy, maybe by going to mass. But she probably saw something there that was evil and she went to her roots of her Catholicism. That's my understanding of what was going on here. And again, uh, remember Ted Bundy that when he once said murder is not about lust, it's not about violence, it's not it's not about violence, it's about possession. So a lot of these guys, you know, that's one of the characteristics of the demonic. It's called violence. And so for someone to do what he did, he was either, like I said, mentally off. But I would suspect that he had some demonic influences because you can't do what he did, in my take, without the devil's help. That's my take. And I'll I'll tell you that this individual, everything he did, his whole lifestyle. Yeah, Pretty pretty much demonstrates that's right that there was there was extraordinary diabolical yeah. influence. I'll tell you mm-hmm. why, because the the famed exorcist Father Gabriel Morth he talks about four ways that demons use what's called their extraordinary diabolical activity upon a person. One of the ways that demons well, first of all, demons are attracted uh, they're attracted to people that live in mortal sin. Father Amor says that that demons are attracted of people that have grave hardening in sin. Did you catch that? So individuals who abandon themselves, Father Amor says, to sexual perversions, to drugs, uh, to violence, people who abandon themselves to uh, type of addictions, they open themselves to possession. Also, Father Amor says, that demons uh, are attracted to people that uh, that frequent evil places and hang out with evil people. I can just imagine this killer. He's going from prostitutes uh, places That's right. to gambling parties. Prostitutes, gambling parties. He's going from one addiction to another. Addictions attract demons. And I can probably tell you that the guys he was hanging out with I don't think he was hanging out with anybody from the Catholic Men's Fellowship or the Brotherhood of St. <laughs> Dismas or anybody from the Knights of Columbus. I'm sure most of his friends were evil people. Again, that's one of the ways that you open yourself up to the diabolical when you hang around with a network of evil people and you go to evil places. And one more thing. I remember a friend of ours named Deborah Lipsky, who was a Satanist for seven years and is now an on-fire Catholic. She says that anger... She says that emotion attracts demons like perfume, you know. Uh, She says that anger works mathematically with the principle of like attracts like. Demons are angry, and so when they see somebody who's angry and confused, like the killer from Vegas, they're attracted to people like that. Like attracts like. Now, that's just how it is. Birds of the feather flocking together. Again, I want you to have a good grasp of the demonic, and we have a video that's called an interview with an exorcist, and I'd be happy to give that away. You just pay the shipping, because I want you to understand that the devil is a real person. He's actually out there uh, roaring like a lion, as the Bible says. He's out to get you, and if you don't know that, he'll come and get you, but I want you to get it by calling 877-526-2151, and by the way, you can register for the Spiritual Warfare Conference coming up January 13th of next year uh, at that same number. Before I throw it back to Jesse, I just want to remind everybody again, we are excited here at Relevant Radio, Macklin Hearts Merger. This Friday, 2 p.m., you want to tune into the radio because Father Rocky and our own Father and our own Patrick Madrid, he's going to join Drew Mariani to give you the new lineup. But I can whisper this to you. The Terry and Jesse show will be on 5 o'clock in the afternoon, California time, and it goes all the way to New York. So we're excited about that. And if you'd like, you can uh, go to the, the iPhone app for Relevant Radio to pick up us, even if you're not in one of our radio shows areas. But I want to say this. We're excited that we're going to be in cities like New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, 
Again, you don't want to miss this this Friday show, 2 p.m. on Relevant Radio. You're gonna have, you're gonna get all the good news to hear about what's happening starting Monday, the 16th of October. Here's one, two last points I'll make, and before we wrap it up on this yep. uh, a killer from Las Vegas. Here's also another thing that may have happened to him. He had a bad father. Okay, Big his time. father was a crook, a thug, and a bank robber. And so his father probably had some type of demonic contamination himself, and those demonic spirits moved within the family, moved within his children. So that's another connection as to why this guy was so evil, as to why this guy did something that's just so unspeakably evil. Here's a second connection. I'm making all the, the, the spiritual warfare connections here. Okay, uh, He used to patronize prostitutes. His brother admits it. The family admits it. And the fact is, when you sleep with a prostitute or a, or another person, for that matter, uh, medical science says that you basically have slept with everybody that they've been to bed with. Now, what happens, prostitutes have been to bed with hundreds, if not thousands of people. Many of the people that go to prostitutes are possessed or obsessed or oppressed. And so what happens, that evil spirit can now be attached to you. They call this in spiritual warfare soul ties. You'll find an exorcist, when they interview a victim, they'll always ask, do you have any soul ties? They'll say, what do you mean, Father? Well, who, who have you been to sleep with? Who have you been to bed with? And what type of life did he leave? Was he part of a cult? Was he part of the occult? Was he part of some uh, you know, uh, uh, pagan religion? Uh, was he part of a New Age movement? In other words, that's called, that's called in spiritual warfare soul ties. And that's the fact that he patronized prostitutes. I can imagine how many evil spirits he was exposed to in those unlawful unions. Terry? All I can say, folks, this is real stuff. We need to pray. Let's pray for the California fires that are going on. Can you imagine? Picture this. Your whole neighborhood burned down. That's what they're dealing with up in uh, Napa, up in that area of Santa Rosa. Let's pray for them. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Full sheen ahead. You want to get those Bishop Sheen CDs? Call 877-526-2151. May God richly bless you and your family. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. 